Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I have some F4U1 a gameplay for you. So this F4U in my opinion is by far one of the most horribly under tiered aircraft in the game. It performs extremely well with the enemies that it fights. It has virtually no downsides apart from the fact that it is not the best climber that there is on this uh, on this tier and that it will face the that guns are good enough you know the 50 cals are very versatile weapons you can use them in multi-purpose roles and if you get a good burst in they can be just as devastating as cannons and to add to that it is a excellent diver you will m most of the time out dive whatever you are fighting whether it be a 109 Maybe not necessarily a Focke Wolf, but apart from that, you can outdive just about everything in the game. And you can keep up your speed as one of the best in your matchup. So, now let's get actually started with the gameplay. What you've just seen is me just working over one JU88, and I proceed on to the next one. Now, this is, well, a little bit. I don't really know what exactly happened here. I guess I just really didn't aim these shots very well because none of these actually hit. Um, but, you know, I guess that was my part. Now, he did do a little bit of damage to us, not necessarily critical damage, but he has damaged our oil cooling system, which in the long run is gonna bite me in the ass. Now, he is quite fast, but obviously, I'm in a faster, so I can go a lot faster. And I don't... I just kind of want to stay below him, because that way he has the m most limited angle of attack on me. If you sit directly on his tail, then with this JU-88, I believe you are indeed able to get all guns on target. But as we put in a very good burst, we uh, cripple the plane and take him out very quickly. Now, as I said, my oil is damaged a little bit, so we are trailing some black smoke. But for now, that is not priority number one, because there is a lot of enemies around us. There is two guys on our level, roughly one is diving down now, and one is above us. Now, the guy above us is looking like he wants to engage us, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to dive after the Focke Wolf, because, well, the 109 is going for me, so... I might as well go for the Focke Wolf. Now, the 109 has broken off, but that does not mean I will stop my dive on the Focke Wolf. Because he is threatening our... well, it's not even our airfield yet, and most of our guys have already landed or are taking out the AA, which in the long run is not a good idea, because you actually capture the airfield and also the AA. Now, after putting a good burst in uh, the Focke Wolf, we set him on fire, and we take him out as well. So, if you took a little bit of close examination to my aim there, you could see that my reticle was not directly on the plane. And that is one thing that I really, really dislike about wing-mounted guns. If you are from a relatively far range, and he gives you the broad wingspan of your plane to shoot at, wing-mounted guns are really nice. Uh, they, they line up perfectly, and they're just as good as nose-mounted guns. But when you get really, really close, your guns are obviously in the wing, and they converge on each other at a certain point at which you have set your convergent range. So they get inaccurate because they don't line up on that specific point. So you basically have to aim with one part of your guns, with one part of the wings. Now, what I have already noticed right now is that my oil leak is already starting to really hammer my performance. And I want to head back to the airfield and make sure that I stay in this game. Because my engine is already a little bit orange, and the oil temperature is already starting to increase and is only staying relatively stable when I put it in 75% throttle. Now, I have also noticed that our team is basically dead over that side. There's only one Spitfire left, and I do believe that that is the one that has crashed there. So now I basically have to put the plane in WEP and just gun it for our 
aircraft carriers because there is no real other way that I'm going to survive because my engine is dying and we now have the whole enemy team after us. Now, as you can see, this is one of the main highlights that I highlighted about the Corsair. It is very good at keeping its speed up, although you do have to keep the engine in whip for that to really, really show off. Now, 500, 600 kilometers an hour straight level flying speed is definitely not slow, but it's not really going to outrun a diving 109. But one thing is nice, we are already very close to our aircraft carriers. Now, the bullfighter seems to be having some problems, so I can't really rely on this guy to help me out in trying to fight this uh, guy behind me, because he is, seems to be the biggest threat of them all. Now, the Spitfire does seem to have managed to land without a tail hook, so that is good, so he will be repaired at some point, and he will be able to join the fight. Now, I really tried to keep this engine cool, but now that there's this guy so very close, I can't afford to idle throttle and to be careful with the engine, because now I have to kill this guy. Now, I get just a few hits in, but I don't really do any damage. I don't think he did any real damage to me either, because my engine was already damaged quite a bit. I just checked the gear there, just to make sure that my gear is still intact. And what you can see here is that the orange engine is really, really making the plane hard to fly. And right now, I make the decision, this is not going to work out. I am going to just put this plane down right now, because he already shot out my rudder, which is going to make it very hard to aim. And... He I'm hoping that the AAA is going to do its job. Now, I come in at a very bad angle and at a very bad speed, but it works out. The tail hook catches on, and the plane doesn't get completely wrecked. But there is still the very big issue of there's a lot of planes coming towards us, and I'm on an aircraft carrier repairing, and this is going to be a pretty, pretty bad time as the Yak-1 comes in. I repair it just in time for me not to get shot out of my pilot seat by him. But then again, I am still on an aircraft carrier deck and I have to take off and I have to get up to a reasonable speed to be able to continue my fight, which is at around three, four hundred kilometers an hour. But, well, at this point, the only thing that I can hope is that the Spitfire doesn't die, which sadly has already right now turned out not to be the case. He has been critically damaged, and the Yak-1 gets a very good burst into him. Now, the only thing that I can hope for right now is that the AAA does its job very, very well. Uh, generally speaking, the AAA does its job very well. This was pre-patch gameplay, so back then the AA was really, really wrecking, but it doesn't seem to be working out that well for me. My engine has suffered very critical damage. It is very badly shot up, and even though the Yak-1 is sustaining a lot of damage, it is not the Yak-1 that I have to worry about, it is the 109 F4, which I did not see coming. So, in the end, I guess you just can't win all of them. Now we're going to be heading over to the second game, and I will catch you guys when we're there. So, we are now back with the second game. First target up is a G4M. Now, in the Corsair, you don't really have to be very scared, especially not of bombers at especially the tier that you fight them at because most of them at most will have 12.7s at most and that is uh, even rare uh, and seeing that you're an American plane obviously you don't fight browning 50 cals very often so the bombers that you do fight against are most likely not going to form a very big threat to you. The G4M however does have a 20 mil in the back but it's only really a threat when you sit right behind him. Now I will put a little jump cut here because it is quite a while before anything happens from this point on. Now the battle has been going on for quite a while and I have barely partaken in any of it. Although the scores are still relatively similar, right here we have a bit of a situation. There is a guy going for three targets all on his own and I do want to help him out. The one thing that I want to do here is I want to focus the Yak-1. Um, the guy that the other Corsair was chasing has crashed, so that has removed one player from the enemy team, which is good. But right now, the Yak poses the biggest threat, because he's going for the Corsair. 
Now, I don't worry about the AAA at all, because they are focused on the other Corsair, so they will completely neglect me, which is a good thing. Now, I put a good spray in on the Yak, and he loses tail control, and is set on fire, and he goes down. And while that was happening, the Corsair's turn around is now strafing the BF-110 and takes him out. Now, I will put a little jump cut here because, again, it will take quite a while before anything interesting happens. Now, the battle has been going on for quite a while, again, and everyone has died except for three guys, including me, on our team. And there's two guys left on their team. Now, the A6M2 has been chasing me for quite a while, but, well, a Corsair has no problem outrunning a A6M2. Heck, just about any American plane doesn't have any problems outrunning it. But right now I turn around because I want to help out my friendly A6M2 with the Corsair because the Corsair is going to be the biggest threat right now. As long as I keep up my speed, I am going to be fine in dealing with the A6M2. Now the A6M2 has gained a little bit of distance on me, but I just put the plane in a very shallow dive and gain a lot more speed and just open the distance on him like crazy. So, the only thing that I can really do right now is just kind of run away and open the distance on the A6M2 before I turn around and try and help my friendly because, well, if I turn too quickly then the A6M2 is going to have a lot of gun time on target and at this point I don't know whether he has run out of cannons yet. Now, I put the plane in a little bit of a climb to gain just a little bit more altitude in case I needed later on in terms of trying to get away from the A6M2 again. Now, I make my turn to try and help out my friendly A6M2, but first I will have to watch out for the A6M2. Now, he doesn't get any damage on me, but I do rip my flap, and I actually engage in the fight, which is not a very smart thing. I completely cut my throttle to try and make him overshoot, but I realize that this is a fight that I can never win, and at this point I am really, really lucky that this guy ran out of cannon ammo, because right now he basically would have had me. At this point I'm just trying to negate the amount of damage that he can do to me um, by just trying to evade his guns. Now, the Corsair is coming in as well, so I go for a head-on because that is, to be honest, right now the only option that I really have left with a A6M2 right on my tail and a Corsair coming in. Now, I turn back in for the Corsair because the Corsair is now still the biggest threat because he has the better guns. Uh, he does get some hits in, uh, slowly negating the performance of my plane, but now he leveled out, and I did as well for a little bit, but he goes in a loop, and I just put my plane in a turn. We have quite some distance between us, so we both will be able to get a head-on pass here. I put some rounds into him, setting him on fire, which is very beneficial for me. Now, the only thing that I have to worry about is the A6M2, so I put it into a dive, full engine throttle, um, and, well, just try and evade the 7.7s. Now, I will speed up the gameplay here a bit because this is just me flying forward and trying to get distance on this guy for a little while and just trying to evade his shots. Now at this point I'm still not comfortable enough to turn around on my own, but I see that this guy makes a turn out of his own initiative and I turn around to go and chase him because my plane is still in a good enough condition that I can go and engage him. And then he turns around, which is, well, I mean, I guess it is the only thing really that he can do because I in the long run will catch up to him, but I do set him on fire and take him out. So, that were two games in the F4U 1A Corsair. I really do hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will catch you guys in the next one.